We will be differentiating sine x from first principles. So hopefully you've seen the first principle formula. I'm not going to go through it in this video because you should have learned it when you're differentiating x to find out the result. So in, in this video, I'll be applying this to y equals sine x. So in this question, f of x equals to sine x. So we will be plugging it into this formula. So our first step is So all we did here was plug sine x into our function. So instead of x, we have x plus h here, and here is this sine x is our f of x. So our next step is this step. The tricky part about going from here to here is that you need to know your trig identities to convert sine x plus h to sine x cos h plus sine h cos x and this comes from the sum difference identity which is here so now we can go on to the next step we factor out the sine x so all we did was take this sine x and the sine x take it out and so we left with cos h here minus 1 here and we move the sine h cos x to the right hand side so our next step will be this So all we did here was split up the terms into different fractions. So on the side we have this term on the limit. And now that we have this term for the right hand side. So nothing special here. This step was only to make it more clear for what we'll be doing in the next step. Which is taking out the x terms. So we can take out the x terms because we're only interested in the h terms. So that's why we took out sine x and cos x. The limit does not consider them. So our next step is sine x times this whole term here plus cos x times this whole term here. Well, I'm just going to give you guys the answer. This would be 0 plus cos x times 1. Now, the proof to these limits are actually quite long, so I'll be doing that in another video, but they're actually very famous limits that are basically identities. To prove them, you will need uh, you will need to use your trig identities to expand it out so that you don't come across a problem with h. I mean, you won't come across a problem of dividing by zero. So basically, what we're left with is sine x times zero is just zero. So we're left with cos x. So that's that's the derivative of sine x from first principles. Again, I know this is the most confusing step, but I will be covering these limits in a different video if you're interested in the proof of why. Cos, x, cos h minus 1 divided by h is 0 and sine h divided by h is 0 as the limit approaches 0.